Hey, 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 you guys. How you guys doing? Look, I've changed my glasses. We changed into the, these are like a um, pink, purple. Oh God, y'all, my, my pinky finger, my nail is all the way down. So let's see if I have some, something. My glasses up because one, I like to do that. Two, I like to do that, but no, because of something that's going on. But y'all, y'all know how we do this. But anyway, y'all, y'all know how we do this. this. is a chit chat video. I talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube, and what I'm watching on TV. I tried to uh, make these glasses clean, clean these glasses off, make these glasses clean. I made it worse. Um. All right, that'll do for now. I have me half a thing of wine here. We are going out to eat. When we go out to eat. I don't drink a lot. First of all, I think it's tacky to get slum, sloppy drunk out in public. That's just me personally. Uh, I'll be a little tipsy, but I won't be falling over. <sighs> I've never done that out in public. I just don't do that, y'all. I'm a classy. So anyway, we are going out to eat. We're going to a place called Rawhide, which is very much like the ranch where we typically go, but it's in uptown of Dallas. And so this is just a get ready with me. I'm going to be styling my hair, finishing up my makeup. I look a little ashy. All right, you guys. So let me take, let me go ahead and take, I have this cute little bracelet here. My neighbor, look, my, I'm, I'm going to spill some tea, y'all. I have, my, my old neighbors back in Phoenix and friends, they were friends with someone who, I don't know the term for it. It's actually a, um, I'm powdering my face up. There's actually a term for this. It's more so psychological where you're just stealing just to be stealing. You can afford it. Like this woman was or is wealthy. Like her parents come from wealth. And she was just stealing stuff just to be stealing it. So they had bags and bags of jewelry that she had left there after they had kicked her out. And they were like, Vivian, you can go through this for anything you want. I'm like, what? The stuff had price tags on it. And so I took a couple of things and um, like purses, not purses, um, makeup bags, a couple of bracelets. This is heavy. I think the price on this was like $55. Like she stole hundreds of dollars of stuff. I don't even know how you can steal stuff like that anymore. And I'll do my lips too. So how y'all doing? Personal life, personal life. First of all, I want to say thank you to those of you um, who commented on my uh, video regarding my, my ethno and my mammogram. Yes, it is so important, you guys, to get those things done because uh, you never know. Um, my cousin was only 58 years old. And she was close in age with my mom because as I stated in that particular video, my grandmother was having kids with her kids. So I have cousins that are my, my I have cousins that grew up with my mom basically. And then their kids, my cousin kids are the people I grew up with. Y'all, I don't know where my stuff is to do my brows. And I'm, I'm starting to get perturbed, I'm getting emotional. But just to let you guys know how fast it went. From the time that, it's not about me, but I'm just going to give you an idea of time-wise. From the time that I found out she had had cancer to her passing was just three weeks. To the time of her being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer to her going on hospice was just four weeks. Think about that. Four weeks, a month. From the time where you're given news that you have stage four cancer to you're actively dying when you were placed on hospice, you go through a, gosh, you go through where you're on hospice and you have to qualify for hospice. And then I believe it's like every 60 to 90 days, we go, we, I used to work for hospice, you guys. They go over your plan of care to see if you still qualify, you can be recertified to be on hospice. There are some people that have been on hospice when I was working, they had literally been on hospice for months. So you don't have to be actively dying, but my cousin. I went ahead and did my eyebrows in the back, you guys. But anyway, but anyway, that's another thing too, y'all. Make sure that you have your stuff in order. Um, plan of cares, DNR, do not do not resuscitate forms, um, insurance. Come on, we don't. You know, people don't want to be selling chicken plates. 
to cover your funeral because funerals are not cheap. That's why a lot of times people end up just getting their loved ones cremated because that's the cheapest route. Um, um, and that's one of the things that I spoke to my mother about last year is I wanted to make sure that they had everything in order and I'm actually going to have a sit down and talk to them about that in depth. I know it's morbid. I know it's something that you don't want to do. But the last thing you want to do is when you're in the middle of grieving a loved one is figuring out what you think they would want. So, um, yeah, I'm putting on these earrings. Aren't these cute? They're dragonfly earrings that I got from Shein. Y'all, let's talk about some other stuff. Let's get some um, little... Y'all, my husband is leaving next week, y'all. He is leaving for Houston for a contract job. He will be gone for 13 weeks. Um, uh, we will more than likely, I thought we would try to see him in March, but we're going to wait until April only because that would be the halfway point. And um, this would be our first time being more than a week away from I hug my husband. Look at that shine. Look at that. Yes, girl. Even when we were broken up, I mean, this is like prior to even us getting married. I, we were, sh well, I would just show up. <laughs> girl, I would just show up and be like, here's your VCR. Well, y'all, I'm aging myself. I remember that time we, we had broken up when we were in college. I'm talking about we had broken up when we were in college. And baby, I showed up down to his um, apartment. I was like, um... Here's your VCR. You know, I don't want it. You know, I, <laughs> here you go. So he took it back. You know, I bought him a VCR or something. He let me borrow it or something. I don't know, child, but it was, it was his. And I gave it back to him. And we got back together. But my point is, girl, my point is, is that this would be the longest. So we would definitely be going down and visiting him for a couple of days in April. And um, he doesn't know... Right now, it's 13 weeks. It could be longer. We're going to get to this about them taking my money out. Bank of America. I got, scan I got, I got, um, what do you call it, girl? Security. My, I, I almost, I don't want to say identity theft, but it was security breach. So, next weekend, we're going, not next weekend, in two more weeks, JB and I are going to be going to Longview for my aunt's 70th birthday. And I show you guys the jumper I had purchased, this purple jumper. Let me show y'all some of the accessories. Let me tell you something. When I do something, when there's a goal or something, I make sure that I do everything from head to toe. Y'all know I'm going to do my hair I'm going to blow it out, flat iron it, and I'm going to curl it going back this way so the curls are going to go back. It's going to be big as hell. Yeah. So the accessories are going to be silver. So let me show y'all. I purchased, now I did purchase some silver shoes, but they hurt like hell, so they went back to Amazon. I purchased these dangle silver earrings. Ooh, look at that, child. Look at that. Mm-hmm. I purchased this, um necklace from Shein that's coming in a couple of more days and then I got this oh this cute little handbag isn't this cute now the now necklace kind of has this twist loop that's going to go all the way down to that now my shoes I wanted some silver shoes but since the outfit is all glittery I could be a little you know basic with the shoes so I have these velvet like Heels, aren't they cute? Very heel, very, very basic, not too high. Y'all, hold on, let me set my makeup. I'm using the NYX Professional. Let me set this real quick. Look, I can't see. Oh, all right, that's it. I was a victim of a security breach through my bank. And I am surprised for multiple reasons for how detailed and, and quick these people were, one, and two, because I should know better, because I used to work for Bank of America. I've had this particular account for 19 years. They always say, thank you for being a valued customer. I said, thank you too. So Thursday evening, I get a phone call from the bank, and I have it safe, and it says bank, and I ignore it because I'm like, I ain't got time for this. It says bank. I'm like, I ain't got time for this. 
They call again. I'm like, you know, let me answer and see, see what's going on. They call again. Let me see what's going on. So they're like, hi, um, this is so-and-so from Bank of America. We've been trying to reach you because there has been some suspicious activity on your account. We want to verify if you've been basically using your account in this state. And we know you're not because you're in Texas. I said, yeah, you're right. I am in Texas. And so he's like, okay, so I'm going to send you a text message to verify that your identity. So I sent him the code that he sent me. Mind you, this is the same code. Excuse me. This is the same. Um, sorry, y'all. My, my code, my thing went out. This is the same text message um i don't know how you say it message number that bank of america actually uses so i'm like okay they, 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 this is legit then he's like okay so i see you have you have this amount of money in your account i said yeah yeah that's true i didn't give him my account number i didn't give him the last four digits of my social none of that i didn't give him my 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 login none of that so then he sent me a second code he said okay now i need for you to verify this I sent that over and I verified it. And, you know, I, I gave him the number. He's like, okay, if I were you, I will go ahead and change my password just to be safe. I said, okay, good. I hung up the phone. Something didn't sit right with me with this phone call. First off, the guy had a very heavy accent. And I know I have nothing against accents. I have me hell. My husband is, is from another country. But this guy, either he was Russian or he was drunk. I mean, heavy, heavy, heavy European accent. And so nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. And so I'm like, hmm, something's not, but something didn't sit right with me. So I immediately go to my email. No, 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 I immediately, I immediately go to Bank of America and log in. Your password is, is incorrect. I'm like, oh, you have got, you know, you shit me. I use my cell phone. Your password is incorrect. I go to my email. I see all these email messages. Your account was accessed from an unknown location. Your account was accessed from, from an unknown device. Your password has been changed. The, I'm like, oh, when I tell you I worked fast, I worked fast. I logged on to Bank of America. I immediately changed not only my password, but I changed my user ID. I then called Bank of America and said, hey, there's been some suspicious activity on my account. They froze my account. This is what happened. They did a transfer using Zeal. They transferred all the money out. And it went to another account. God knows where. From there, I said, you know what? This is not good because I get paid tomorrow. So they immediately froze my account. That means they froze my bank account. Nothing can go out. Stuff can come in. You can deposit my money back. Thank you. But nothing can go out. So froze that and they recommended me set up a new account. I was not playing around because I have several means of income and I need to make sure that this new account is set up so that I can switch up my other, you know, uh, means of income so they could have this information. The next morning, let me tell y'all, I was so stressed out. My chest was hurting. The next morning, I got paid from one of my, <coughs> excuse me, one of my <coughs> sources of income and everything was okay, right? So then I went ahead and set up a new account, the representative, and she informed me that, okay, you can still use your debit card I can link it to this new account. So she did that. She transferred all my money over to the new account. We linked it, right? And then I went ahead and proceeded to change my password. Let me tell you something. I changed my password four times within 24 hours. I was not playing around. I changed my password again. I was not playing around. I set up all types of notifications. I did a two-step verification it is annoying as hell but a two-step verification when i access my account online or on my phone i have to have another passcode to get in via through my phone so unless you got my phone you're not gonna be able to get it and so whenever i spoke with the bank of america reps and i told one of them told me she's like yeah they sent you a code through this number i said yeah she's like yeah that is our number and so another rep was like, oh my God, they are getting smarter and smarter.
And she's like, it makes you not want to put your money where I said, you know what? This is the thing. My savings account is not with Bank of America. That is one thing that one of my older friends, thank you, Ms. Yolanda, taught me to do. She said, you know, first of all, if you're not that good saving your money, um, and just to be safe, have your savings account at another bank. And so that's what I've always done. I've, I've been doing that for years. Now, I went ahead, baby. I was not playing around. I contacted my main job. I sent over a new direct deposit form. Um, you could even do copies of voided checks online through Bank of America. Did all that. I forgot what time it is. Okay, I'm good. And so um, I went ahead and contacted Google. <laughs> um, that's the good thing about having multiple streams of income. So point being... Oh, that was scary. I still probably have some more places I need to switch things up. But right now, I feel safe. I, I No, I don't necessarily feel safe. I feel better the way that I've set things up. So, yeah, y'all be careful. I mean, they had... I didn't give him anything but gave him confirmation of those codes. That's it. That's it. I didn't give him my account number. I didn't give him... Um, what is that? Yo, what is that? Okay, here we go. I didn't give him... The only thing I did was verify my balance. And so the red flag is a heavy Russian accent. <laughs> the red flag was he gave me my balance and I verified it. I'm not supposed to do that. A second red flag was his, him saying, well, you may want to change your password and, and saying bye when typically they would freeze your account for you as a service. That was another red flag. And secondly, honestly, I can't say that they wouldn't call you because I have gotten calls before from Bank of America saying there's been some suspicious activity on your account. But then in the same breath, they say, and we have frozen your account. And I'm like, okay. So... Moving forward, I'm just not going to take any phone calls from Bank of America. No, seriously. I'm just not. All right, y'all. I think I'm done with my hair. I'm going to put some gloss on. This is going to be a little bit different. And I want to tease, tease, tease my hair. So let's talk about what I'm watching on YouTube. Girl Tank and this other young with a snapper. I'm so old. This other young guy have a podcast called for the love no is it called r&b money it's called r&b money i just discovered it they have quite a few people that have been on this on this podcast very first guest was jimmy fox they've had eric benet kenny Lattimore, coco jones um a couple of other different people i haven't watched a full one yet i've just been i'm so excited to have discovered this i've just been watching snips, snippets y'all let me go ahead and put my clothes on tube you guys i follow her on instagram atia the og of relaxed hair um i love miss atia my fellow east texan girl she's she's um originally from beaumont atia finally received her um youtube sign her sign from youtube and she said the reason why it took so long is because she had moved and it was hard <clears throat> for them to track her down so i am so proud of her so yeah besides that girl i'm watching free movies and stuff on youtube all right y'all i'm putting on my shoes <laughs> so y'all i forgot to tell y'all we went to go see megan the movie it was good surprisingly good it was funny jb and i went to go see it so i did watch love and marriage huntsville sorry y'all i gotta take these off and put on some socks yeah i did watch love and marriage huntsville which was good you know what if you're not watching it i'm not gonna really get into detail but some of those folks are an absolute mess started to rewatch ayana then zayam fix my ratchet ass life's the one that still sticks out to me you guys is the family where the husband moved in all of these extra family members to where there's like 17 19 people living in the house and they're complaining that the lady of the house has an attitude She's a drunk. She's doing all of this and this. She's she's upset. 
And her husband literally moved all these people in and told her the day before they were coming in and was basically like, yeah. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't all of them moving in at the same time. They slowly started coming in, but the vast majority majority of them just moved in without her approval. Oh, we're going to the ranch. Stop, kind of, sort of. Put your pants on. Um, the poor woman, baby, died from SIDS. And they never really got therapy for it. They never really discussed it. She said that the husband doesn't even talk about it. And you wonder why she's walking around mad. You wonder why. Some people are just so selfish. I'm back to watching Fargo. Fargo is a comedy dark, much like the actual movie. Um, also watching based on the true life body in the suitcase. Girl, I forgot to tell y'all this. On Netflix, Cabinets of Curiosity by that... <laughs> what is his name? I put his name in, in the comments section. Excuse me, the um, bottom up here. So, the guy that did Pan's Labyrinth. When I tell you, there... I would say after, out of all of the episodes, I did like two of them. Um, but it was dark. It was creepy. And I was here for it. I really don't. All right, let me show you this outfit. I'm hot. Putting on these boots. I'm hot. 